stages, I give you Mr. John Delancey. So, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> uh, it's the weather. Let's talk about weather. Uh, I, 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 let me tell you a few things about what I've been doing, during which time you can think of some questions. And then, all you have to do is um, shout out the question loud enough for all of us to hear, okay? And then we'll just go bing, bang, boom, okay? Um, I was in um, Washington, D.C. Uh, a couple, let's see, from October, uh, actually, middle of September all the way to the f end of the first week of December doing a play um, by a very famous playwright, uh, Robbie Bates, John Robin Bates. And um, it was called Vicuña. And it was one of the most scathing indictments of um, Trump. Uh, except I did not play Trump. I played a character called... Uh, Kurt Seaman. Yes, you got it. And um, I come to a tailor shop to have a suit made for a, the final debate. And uh, lots of politicians and diplomats and people like that came to see the show. And um, it, was really, it was really terrific. One of the things that we discovered, though, is that the American populace it has sort of had it up to here. And um, so there's been some talk about taking it to England where one could have a little bit of distance. It's really Trump 2.0 or 3.0. It is a very bright, that's different, uh, uh, a very bright, very charismatic, very aggressive, um, uh, demagogue, and um, you are watching this take place on stage. At the end of some of these speeches, which were really terrific, um, very complicated language speeches, the audience, I would hear the audience just simply go, <laughs> in their recognition of what was going on. Um, I came back and um, I have decided to take another big trip on a boat that I have. Um, I'm a sailor, and I just found out, just found out about a half an hour ago, one of my sons, uh, um, both of my sons have been working on our genealogy, and one of them was able to have a major breakthrough. So we go back to our great, great, great grandparent. We can go back as far as that. and. Um, he was a sailor. So I was like, well, so I was pleased about that. Um, and uh, so I'm refitting a boat, which means that uh, I do a lot of the work myself. So um, I I'm refitting a boat. I put in new chain plates with a friend of mine, and uh, we're just doing a lot, of, a lot of structural work on the boat. And we will take it to the Marchese's. Uh, I've already done this trip once, uh, uh, so the Marchese's from Ventura is about uh, 3,600, 3,200 miles, something like that. Um, and then to the Tuamotos, which is the largest island, coral island archipelago in the world. Uh, and, um, and then on to the Society Islands, which include Tahiti and Morea and you know, Bora Bora. And then uh, Fiji and uh, Vanuatu and Tonga and places like that. Uh, I, uh, last time, I put the boat up in Rayatea and then brought it back up. And um, we were, uh, a young man and I were on the boat. Um, he had never sailed before, one of my, one of my son's, younger son's friends. And um, we were 52 days at sea. So. Uh, and that's six on, six off for 52 days. Uh, uh, it's a, there's a lot of reading. We also had a couple of, uh, struck, uh, of some uh, equipment failures, which were a little frightening. And, um, but 
we got it back. Got back a lot thinner, uh, <laughs> and I didn't look at that boat for about a year. So, um, so okay, some questions. Yes, who? Oh, uh, you know what? They, they can just shout out. It'll go a lot faster. Yes. So, your career spans greater than two decades, and you've been associated with multiple fandoms. Of the different fandoms that you've been associated with, what do you think characterizes each of them and makes them different from each other? And of those fandoms, which of them have given you the most interesting experiences? <laughs> which of the fandoms have given me the most interesting experiences? My first... Um, experience actually with with the fact that that an audience I, I was I, until I was around 28 years old I only did plays so from 14 until 28 I only did plays so if you saw the play and and you stuck around afterwards to talk about it that was my interaction I then um, went to uh, I got a job to go to Los Angeles and and the first thing I did was a movie of the week and uh, I, I guess the move I mean the movie of the week show the night before and I was at the um, at the newspaper stand the next day to buy a, uh, a newspaper and the guy uh, turned around and I said you know here's the 25 cents or whatever and he goes oh huh. so you're the asshole who was da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I was shocked <laughs> because I had played I had played, you know, the, the, the person who is sitting on the seat uh, next to the old lady on the plane who grabs the oxygen mask before her, her oxygen mask. Well, I sort of was a jerk, but I had never experienced that that would transcend into a larger public. Um, my real big, my first experience was um, on Days of Our Lives. I ended up doing Days of Our Lives. I was hired to do five days, and they liked what I did, and it ended up being a three-year gig. And that was my first experience with fandom. Now, you have to understand, I come from a culture that we just never watched. Now, the, the television, first of all, because I didn't know how to read and had flunked out of school, um, television was pulled out of the house. So I didn't have television as a kid, really, to, 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 to watch all the time. So the whole notion that people in the middle of the day that would be watching television was really uh, uh, foreign to me. But, oh my gosh, uh, there was, uh, I realized, a, a very large segment of the population who was watching Days of Our Lives. Not the least of which is that we got a letter from... Um, um, I can't remember his first name. Um, Kissinger. What, what's Kissinger's first name? Henry Kissinger. <laughs> okay. So I guess at lunch, Henry Kissinger watched Days of Our Lives. Um, um, I, I got a letter from a, a woman whose son was severely autistic, I guess it is, and this is a long time ago. This is 1980, so this is a little bit before all of these understanding what all of this was. And she said, when you come on, my son laughs and watches it and, and is really, really present. And I, uh, that was something that we had never experienced with him. So I, I said it to the doctor, and the doctor said, well, just put him in front of that television and have him watch as much as he, he can. Um, th so I, I began to understand that there was there were fandoms out there, there were groups of people out there who watched it. Needless to say, uh, when I started doing, um, uh, after about three days of Star Trek, um, um, I heard a, a voice uh, be right behind me say, uh, you have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> and I turned around and it was Gene Roddenberry and, uh, and I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, you'll see. <laughs> So by the time I got to um, this fandom, I, I was sort of uh, understanding. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons in which I created that uh, documentary was because I recognized it as a uh, 
burgeoning a, a, a fandom that was just beginning to to, um, to to develop, and that I just didn't want um, um, news organizations like Fox News and what have you to make fun of it. So I said, let's let's make this documentary. Uh, uh, somebody, yet yeah, in the back? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go. Uh, now, what is Voica? Uh, so, the gentleman has seen Quantum Conundrum, or, or played it, and is there a difference between that and voicing for television? What, what, do you, what is voicing for television? Uh, well, we say this oh, I see. Um, video games have the potential for being boring. Uh, because you're going turn right, turn left, turn you know upside you know you're, just, you're, you're repeating you know there are lots and lots and lots and lots of commands and you kind of go oh my gosh you're not following a story in a way um, so that's that's something that's not as much fun also it's usually just you and you are, it's you, a mic, and, a, and an engineer, and you are working for four hours at a time, five, six hours at a time. It's just, uh, like that. Um, whereas, uh, um, well, My Little Pony, it, it's, it, it's a real story, and I'm really following it. You know, it's a, it's a regular script. So that's, that's probably the only big difference. Um, um, when I did um, um, Assassin's Creed, I did a couple of those. Uh, you come into a booth and they put a helmet on your head with two, excuse me, um, LED lights shining right into your face. And, uh, and you, do, you do it that way. And then when I was finished, uh, uh, you know, finish, it, it's not, it's not an pleasant experience. When I finished, I walked out of the booth and the casting director was there with a glass of water and some Advil. <laughs> and I said, what is this? And she said, oh, most of the actors ask for this right afterwards. <laughs> I said, well, if you make it a bourbon, I will be happy. <laughs> so, um, so that type of stuff has its it has its um, ups and downs, but, but generally it's kind of in the same ballpark. Okay, next question. Yes? I have a question. Um, well, more of a thing I want you to elaborate on. You said you didn't have television as a kid. I also didn't have television as a kid, but I lived in the internet era, so I used like the computer all day. But I wanted you to elaborate on what you thought about people who don't have television now. Now that's increasingly possible. Not uh, to, to elaborate on what is it? Uh, on how I feel about a television not being in, uh, in a home. In a home. Yeah. I, I don't mind that. I, I think we spend way too much time, myself included. Uh, now, of course, it's with the, uh, with the phone, uh, with the smartphone, way too much time on the screens. Way too much time. I mean, one of the things is, is that, and I know I'm going to sound like a big old fart up here, but the fact, <laughs> the fact is, is that, I can't tell you how excited I was. Now, I grew up on the East Coast, where, and I was very affected by, um, by the weather. I, I, I really didn't like the East Coast. Uh, starting in October until about April, it's really gloomy, and it affected me. But during the summertime, I remember getting up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning and, and, and being so excited about going out. and, and you know, my mom would say, well, just be back at dinner time. Now, I know that that's sort of difficult to do now. People think that that's like, you know, but I used to go, we had the woods near, near where we were, so I used to go exploring in the woods, and I, I used to do all that type of stuff, which I think is um, more, uh, I think it's somehow it's better than spending a lot of time on the, on, on, on the uh, 
on the uh, screen. Um, I, um, I also feel that we have, uh, I, I don't know, but there's a little too much. I'm in the entertainment business, but I'm sort of not particularly interested. Uh, uh, um, uh, the, it, it, I, I feel that there's a, um, like anything else, um, be it restaurants or friends or books you read or movies you go to or what have you, only generously 10% of them are any good and, and really worth it. And so 90% of the stuff you do is just kind of like, you know, so um, uh, I, I don't know, I would recommend taking the TV out and letting people do other things. Yes. Yes, I, I love this. I, speaking about being on the screen too much. <laughs> I have a certain certain questions I want to ask you. I want to make sure this is uh, filmed for posterity. Uh, this is going to go out into space. People in a bazillion years from now are going to be able to see it. Uh, okay. Live long and Live long and yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I was on Family Guy for a little something, and then, um, and what was the other question? Um, how much fun was it to talk when you were playing this when you talked to how, oh, That's right, how much fun, <laughs> fun was it to be talking to myself um, uh, when I did uh, one of the Discord shows? Uh, it was exhausting. <laughs> it was exhausting, okay? Talk to yourself at high at a high, high speed for about 20 minutes, and, and tell me if you don't feel like you need a nap after that. <laughs> uh, yes. Who's my least favorite character in Star Trek: The Next Generation? Um, uh, oh, I don't even know how to answer that. Um, I know it comes as a big surprise, but most actors will tell you the same thing, is that aside from seeing the show once, perhaps just to check to make sure that what you thought you were doing, you were doing, uh, or to make adjustments for the next time, we, we don't watch it. It's a little, have you ever heard, do you know what a busman's holiday is? Have you ever heard of that? Busman's holiday is that it's the bus driver who goes on a holiday and, 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 and the way in which he goes on the holiday is to take the bus. Okay? So that's called the busman's holiday. It's kind of like, like that. Most of the time, I don't derive that much entertainment from it because you see this, the interior of this. I see all around it, all the invisible stuff that you're not seeing, I'm seeing, I know. So, so, um... It's, it's hard for me to be, quote, to lose that and to be entertained by it. Yes, all the way in the back. Coffee? Coffee? Carl, like coffee? Oh, great, thanks. <laughs> drop the end of the sentence. Have I ever been starstruck in my films or acting career? No. Oh, um, I, 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 yes and no. I, I did two films with, uh, with um, uh, Jeff Bridges. And um, my wife, who had come to, to come on the set, uh, who's an actress, and who had been on many, many sets, uh, I said, oh, hey, Marnie, this is Jeff. Hi, 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 hi. Oh, it's very, very nice to meet you. <laughs> she, she said, I've never been so, like, like, oh, like that. I, I haven't been quite that way, um, uh, but um, it, it's, it's, it's nice, it's fun to work with people who are, you know, well-known and, and, and mostly to discover that they're nice people. 
most people, most people in the theater world, most people who've had theater training tend to be good actors, uh, 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 put it this way, most actors tend to be uh, very nice people in the, uh, when you're working. And more often than not, if they've had theater training, that sort of becomes part of, and parcel of why. Because there is, uh, uh, in theater training, the show is, in fact, more important than anything else. So you park your, your personality. I mean, you need to do your work. And, and the work of the, um, of the show. So, so it's, um, you know, you, you just make things happen in, in, in a good way. Go ahead, next question. Okay, what's it like to see my character, the character for which I've been hired for one or two episodes to, to come back? Um, I've had that experience now a number of times, and it's obviously, it's very gratifying. Um, it, it's, it's just very gratifying. Um, uh, and you can kind of tell, before you, you've even done the work, um, you can tell in your preparation whether this is something that you're going to be able to not only inhabit, but actually begin to make.